Right, guys, let's carry on. So remember, we were busy looking at the FIFO method of valuing stock. Now, again, focus. I know I keep on saying this, but focus and pay attention because this next question that I'm, that I'm about to tackle was asked by a few students. Can a business change their stock valuation method? Right, so let's look at the question first or the information that is given and then let's look at whether or not a business can change the method of stock valuation. Right, so you are told the owner and the accountant disagree on the method of stock valuation. Okay, let's see why. Steve, the owner, wants to continue using the FIFO method. So our, we've got our owner, Steve. He wants to continue using FIFO because he says it is easier to calculate. Bongi, on the other hand, so Bongi is the accountant, wants to use the weighted average method because she says that profit will be lower and therefore the income tax will be lower. Mm, okay, a bit of ethical questions there, isn't it? Right, so looking at both scenarios, Steve wants to stick with the FIFO method because according to Steve, it's easier. I don't want to do something complicated. Something is working, it's easier. Let me stick with the FIFO method. And then you've got the accountant that is now suggesting, hang on, let's change to the weighted average method because if we use the weighted average method, our profit will be lower and we'll end up paying less tax. Right, so let's look at the question itself. As the internal auditor, so you are the internal auditor, grade 12s, what would you say to Steve and Bongi? State two points. Right, so this goes back to, like I said, an earlier question, can a business change from one stock uh, method to the other? And what does the business need to consider in making such a change? Right, now if we go back to the reasons for um, them wanting to use a specific method, let's look at Steve's reason. It is easier. Now remember guys, when you choose your stock valuation method, and I'm now talking from the business's perspective, that method or that accounting policy that is used by the business in terms of valuing their stock depends on the type of stock they have. So for example, if it's a business selling high-tech computer equipment such as laptops, you will use something as the, the FIFO method, right? Because obviously um, in, you would want to get rid of the stock that you purchased first because newer models are coming in with a higher value. Okay, you guys with me? Right, then the weighted average method, slightly different. So obviously the product itself doesn't change much, hence you want to use the weighted average method for the, the type of product that you are selling. So it's not based on whether or not it is an easier method. Okay, you guys with me. Then the accountant's perspective. The accountant is now suggesting to the owner Let's use weighted average method because that, me that method is going to show a smaller profit. And remember, what are the benefits of showing a smaller profit for the business? You end up paying less tax. Okay, you guys, you guys got that. So remember, if your profit is low, obviously your tax then is reduced as well. Now again, you cannot choose a stock valuation method to manipulate profits, right? That is illegal, that is unethical. And remember, the stock valuation method that you use is normally given to SARS, given to the receiver of revenue. And if the business has to change their stock valuation method, this also needs to be approved. You need to get permission from SARS before you go about doing this. You can't just chop and change and then manipulate the amount of tax that you pay. Okay, so I think I discussed quite a bit on that. Hopefully it made sense. And please remember something else that I just wanna add on to that. 
if you do change your stock valuation method, remember there needs to be proper disclosure in your financial statements. You need to actually state that so your shareholders are aware that there was a change in the valuation method. Okay. Right, so I think let's move on now to the next question. I'm just looking at how much of time we have left and um, let's see how much more we can do in this uh, part of the question. The next question that I had was a question on um, ratio analysis. And remember guys, on Monday I did tackle ratio analysis, but there were a few additional questions. How do you calculate the stock holding period, okay, so number of days stock on hand, stock holding. Then another question was how do you calculate debtors, okay, as well as your creditors, right, here your debtors collection, okay, collection period, and how to go about calculating creditors payment. Right, so remember these are your liquidity ratios. So your stock holding period, another name for that is number of days stock on hand. So when we calculate your stock holding, remember now guys, I'm basically giving you a formula. We need to take our average stock and we then divide this by um, your Average stock divided by cost of sales, that comes from your income statements, and you multiply this by 365 because your answer must be in days. Okay, so very quickly, average stock, we are referring to your current trading stock plus your previous year's trading stock according to your balance sheet. And remember, you need to then divide this by two and that gives you your average stock. Cost of sales comes from your income statement. So that is straightforward and normally income statement for the current financial year. Right, now I think the, the question that was asked is how do I go about interpreting stock holding? So remember guys, your stock holding is obviously in days. So I just wanna now quickly give you um, an answer. So let's say 25 days is the answer that I get. Now remember as a business, you do not want to overstock. So what do I mean by overstock? You buying too much of stock your capital, your working capital is tied up in stock and you end up not selling that stock. Now remember, the stock is just sitting in your business, sitting on the shelves, sitting in the storeroom, wherever, and that needs to be uh, transformed back into cash. So the only way you can do that is obviously by selling the stock. So normally, you would recommend to a business not to overstock. Right? Keep enough of stock for your customers, but do not overstock. Because remember, if you overstock, that could lead to theft, right? Possible. Stock could be damaged. Your insurance costs could increase. Your storage costs could increase as well. So that's your stock holding period. Right, the next ratio that I was asked to explain was the debtors collection period. Now, when we talk about debtors collection period, again, we are looking at average, this time average debtors, divided by credit sales. And once again, you want your answer in days, so you're gonna multiply this by 365, okay? Right, so for example, your answer could be, again, I'm just making up a random figure, it could be 30 days, just as an answer. Right, so what does this ratio tell you? It tells you how long the debtors are taking to settle their accounts. Now, normally, you would give your debtors 30 days to pay their accounts. Some businesses obviously allow a longer period of time, but this ratio looks at how long are debtors 
taking to pay their accounts. Remember, if they're taking too long, you may have to charge them interest. You've got to send them regular reminders, um, bombard them with SMSs, emails in order for them to pay their accounts on time. Because remember, that also affects your liquidity. Okay. And then finally, the last ratio, again, from you guys that you wanted me to explain, creditors payment period. So here we're looking at your average creditors. Okay, guys, average creditors divided by cost of sales or credit purchases, depending on what they give you. Okay, so remember, if they don't give you credit purchases, you then use cost of sales. And again, you're going to multiply this by 365 because your answer must be in days. So for example, let's say I get an answer of 55 days. Right, so what does this ratio tell the company? It basically tells the company how long the company is taking to pay their creditors. Now remember guys, the longer you take to pay your creditors, and I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm about to say, so please listen to everything before you judge what I'm saying. The longer you take to pay your creditors, the longer money is sitting in your bank account, and it's obviously better for liquidity. Obviously, you don't want to upset your creditors. Now, remember, as a business, you will buy in bulk from your suppliers so you can negotiate a longer payment period. Right, what do I mean by longer payment period? I'm referring to 60 to 90 days before they start charging you interest. Okay, so remember, as a business, you want your debtors to pay you first. Your debtors must always pay first, right? You will then use this money to then pay your creditors. So for example, my debtors are taking 30 days to pay. I am then taking the money that I collect from my debtors and I am taking between 55 days to pay my creditors. So that is an ideal situation for liquidity. If it was the other way around, you could end up in a bank overdraft. So for example, if my debtors are taking 60 days to pay, but let's say I'm paying my creditors within 28 days, so clearly money is not coming into the business. Right, remember, I expect my customers to pay me first. So if my customers are taking 60 days to pay, money is not flowing into my bank account and I'm ending up using a bank overdraft, which negatively affects liquidity. Okay, 